Hey, welcome back to Fish Hunt Northwest. We are now in the bait lab and we're gonna talk a little bit about, well, all this green stuff. No, it's not antifreeze. We're gonna cure up some rainbow trout for halibut bait. Yes, again, you can use rainbow trout and kokanee. And if you think kokanee, that's blasphemous. Uh, you catch some 11 and maybe 12 inch kokanee and you got a whole pile of them. Maybe five to 10 of them you don't wanna flay out and deal with, right, David? So we're gonna turn those into bait because they work really good. Problem is, how, uh, kokanee especially can be a little bit on the soft side, trout can as well. We just need to toughen them up a little bit. If we're going to brine them and toughen them up, we might as well add a tremendous amount of UV. UV never hurts. And as we get deeper into this show and we sit down with John Beeth, you're going to realize exactly how, um, how far UV has come in the industry of where it started and where we've gone with it. So the fact we can add UV to baits is just a bonus that Again, if you're gonna brine them up, you might as well add some color that they can see down the dark. So I have actually some rainbow from last year. Caught them out here in the lake and just throw them in the Ziploc bag in the freezer. Don't have to take a whole lot of real good care of them. Don't clean them, because the guts and everything in there is what makes these such a, a tasty bait that the uh, halibut really like. So there's a few things, this is very simple to do. Now, three of these have already pre-cut. So uh, looking overhead here, I just basically take a rainbow trout and I put a couple slashes in each side of it. Uh, some of the bigger ones, I'll put three. All I'm doing is opening up that meat a little bit. It really doesn't take the bait and make it to where it doesn't perform well. I open up that meat just a tad and as it sits in the brine, believe it or not, it just seems to get more of the salts and the curing agent into the meat of these trout and really firms them up real nice so they're just not falling apart as they're bouncing around there on the bottom, okay? So that's really the simple part. Just put a couple slices uh, in those, those trout, open up the meat, get the salts in there. Now, we're gonna take our tub here. I have poured into here one bottle of Chartreuse Potsky's Fire Brine. It's a, it's a liquid brine, it cures meat baited fish, it's engineered we engineered this years ago for herring, and uh, they use it over in the Great Lakes for alewives. Um, you can pretty much cure any type of meat. We also do eggs with it, but ideally it's made for fish and fish baits. So two colors that I would recommend using when you're out in your ocean fisheries for sure. Chartreuse, out of all the fire brines, has the highest properties of UV. Um, there's actually uh, pictures I put out on the blogs that under a black light, the things look like they've been to Chernobyl and back. They glow tremendously, okay? So that is what you'll get out of the chartreuse. The dark green, believe it or not, is a close second because of the properties in here in making both of these brines are very similar with the dyes and the UV that's captured in this. So the dark green, which I rely on heavily in some of our Grays Harbor uh, fisheries for both Coho and Chinook when we have opportunity, uh, this dark green sometimes outperforms the Chinook, or excuse me, the uh, chartreuse. But when it comes to the deep waters of halibut and the darkness down there, I'm gonna go with the most bang for the buck. The most UV I can get is out of this, um, out of this chartreuse. So I have one bottle poured in here. Basically with this, because I really want these things to firm up nicely, I'm just gonna put in a cup and a half of non-iodized sea salt. Now, it looks like a lot, okay? But uh, it eventually breaks down and absorbs just by letting these trout lay in this stuff for a couple, three days. It ends up doing a pretty nice job. You, I would never use this much salt on herring or smaller bait fish that I wanna use for salmon, but this is, you know, again, I'm trying to toughen these buggers up to send them down to four to 600 feet or beyond. Um, I think John told me they were fishing halibut a thousand feet. Uh, something I don't want to do. Okay. Um, something else I add, Potsky's liquid krill, or you can use the uh, powdered, okay, just a little tougher to mix this in. Uh, in my blog, I was using the powder. I think I put two to three tablespoons. It's just, <clears throat> excuse me, just as easy to get a bottle of liquid, uh, of the liquid krill, dump that in. Now, you don't have to. It's not like an absolute must but I guarantee you I've had more productivity in most of my ocean fisheries when I add a good krill scent or base into that. Something about the krill 
And you'll see that it kind of turns this a little bit of a dingy brown. It doesn't matter. The UV properties are still in the brine. The chartreuse is still in the brine. It's not going to change the color and the outcome of your uh, baits whatsoever. The other thing we're going to do is we're going to add a tremendous amount of UV and color. The Potsky's Fire Dye. Now, the nice thing about any of these liquid products and these dyes and brines, it's 100% food uh, quality or food grade types of dyes and powders that they put into this. So it's not harmful to the environment at all. You get some pretty strange looks if you have your little tote of UV brine on your boat and when you're done fishing for the day you just throw that out into the out into the water or off the dock or something and you get this tremendous cloud it looks like a parachuter just came out and landed in the water but it doesn't uh, affect uh, mother nature whatsoever because it's all 100% natural so no worries there this stuff is extremely potent in color but I put in two full tablespoons of the fire dye matter of fact that bottle is about empty so we'll just put that in there that's going to add a tremendous amount of UVs so we have one bottle of fire brine which I may add the second one as well depending on how these sit in this tub and you can pick whatever you know, size tub you want. The key here, four or five trout, I'm using a bottle of fire brine, two tablespoons of the fire dye, one bottle of the liquid krill powder, and a cup and a half of the uh, non-iodized sea salt. And you just lay these in here. Now, if I don't wanna spend the extra money, and I'm doing this over a couple day period, if I don't wanna spend the extra money on a second bottle of fire brine, I can literally let those sit in there just like this and they're basically curing on the one side down in the salt in the in the liquid stuff and that's fine in about a day or so in my fridge I'd come out and flip these over and uh, get the other side cured up but uh, I tend to have a little bit of this stuff at my disposal um, when I keep David from taking it out of my storage room I'm just gonna dump this in here to where these buggers are almost floating but you know kind of like when you're curing or brining herring because of the salts in there you know these things will float and of course they're not gutted um, so they're they're basically a little bit buoyant but um, that amount of salt in there with two bottles of fire brine is going to do a real nice job I will literally let those sit in there for a couple days come out flip them over at the end of a couple three days you're going to notice that uh, unlike using the green which would turn these predominantly really dark green uh, they're just going to have a nice light uh, bright kind of fluorescent green to their white bellies the sides of their gill plates will take on a little bit of color their fins will take on a little bit of color don't be alarmed that you think that maybe they haven't taken on enough color and they're not going to have a whole bunch of UV the UV in the brine is soaked into the meat you put them under a black light I guarantee these things are going to glow like crazy so pretty simple little recipe for curing up your rainbow trout toughening them up make them a phenomenal uh, halibut bait they work really well and it's very simple again put the cuts in the side open them up a little bit so the salts and the cures get in there use your chartreuse get some of that fire dye to really add some pop to it and send those buggers down and hold on because halibut absolutely love trout so with that uh, you know what I forgot to look but I think I know what we're doing next I think I do we're gonna jump out for a quick commercial break we come back we're gonna be back in the studio and our guest, John Beeth, is going to be here. We're really going to dive into some finite information. Get your questions ready relative to halibut. Get your notepads ready and take notes because this guy is a wealth of knowledge. John Beeth right here in the studio. We come back right here on FHN.